Thank you, Yuning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Madhavan. All right. Uh, can I just share with you the some basic slides uh, initially? All right. Uh, here we go. All right. So me, Madhavan. Good morning to all. Welcome to our Science of Learning series, Faculty of Business, Economics, Accounting edition. Now, I'm the senior lecturer of the faculty and I'll be moderating the session with our five outstanding alumni from the faculty. Just as a note, our faculty has an approximate uh, 2,500 students and we have produced a significant number of outstanding graduates over the years. All right. So what are our objectives? Now, we as an education, ed educationist, have always been playing an impactful role in shaping the future of our graduates. We are highly concerned on what knowledge and skills do our students need and that they can look up for as needed. Furthermore, in embracing the IR 4.0, we will be very happy to know that our graduates can continue to apply what they have learned in class many years later. Now, basically what are what is science science is basically defined as a study of nature and behavior of natural things and the knowledge that we have obtained about them and in science commonly theories are used hypotheses are tested so every teaching and learning has an outcome which matches the objectives determined Similarly, our faculty and university share a common objective of producing graduates who are competent in all aspects to match the requirement of the corporate world. This hypothesis has been proven with the presence of five proud graduates who are successful in the corporate world. As the saying goes, teach a man to fish by incorporating innovative teaching pedagogy and with passion and dedication, our faculty has taught students the concept of fishing rod, the mechanism of a fishing rod, and allowing students to create a customized fishing rod and experience it in the ocean, fishing in the ocean. So with this forum on science of learning, we will be showcasing our hypothesis that has been proven. The hypothesis of our faculty was based on objectives and learning philosophy of help universities. These are some of the f graduates who have produced, that we have produced over the years. We have Eddie Lim, Liu Paoling, Shamiz, Deborah, and Marcus. Without further delay, without further delay, let me kick, kick off the session by inviting our first panelist, who is Eddie Lim. Now, let me give you a small background of Eddie. He is the youngest SEA Games male gold medalist in Taekwondo for Malaysia. He is a full scholarship holder under HELP University. And currently, he is the head of the Bu Youth Bureau under the Asian Retail Chains and Franchise Federation. Please welcome Eddie. It's yours now. All right, thank you, Madhavan. Um, I think we have uh, approximately, how many people do we have in the room today? Let's see, well, I've got about 30 over people. So good morning, everyone. Uh, so Mr. Madhavan, uh, how do you want me to start off uh, and kickstart the program for all these attendees this morning? Uh, perhaps you can start sharing on how your experience at HELP University have actually molded you to what you are now in the corporate world. All right. OK, so thanks for the question. Uh, so I was basically an alumni. Um, I think I graduated in the year um, 2008. Uh, that's about 12 years ago. Uh, so I was uh, I was a, a student under this faculty. And of course, you know, I think I absolutely believe in education. In fact, uh, my current core business is pretty much involved in education as well. So uh, the reason we are in education is because we believe that education can change a person's life. Now, there are a lot of people out there who says, you know, um, um, A's are not everything, CGPAs are not everything, you know, um, the straight A's in SPM, if you don't get it, it's okay. I absolutely agree. Um, it's okay if you don't get straight A's, it's okay if you don't get a CGPA of 4.0. However, I do believe 
if you do get your straight A's, if you do get your CGPA of 4.0, it will get success to you in a much easier manner. So I think, you know, all, while it may not be everything, it is definitely something, right? And university life is very different. Uh, I'm not sure if the attendees over here today are mostly still in high school or if they're in, uh, in, in, in university life already. But uh, if you're in high school, I think a lot of people, they, um, they often mislook uh, the other important aspect of university life, uh, which is the people who are around you. And when I say that, a lot of people usually say, you know, uh, they know people will tell them that, you know, oh, yeah, you got to meet your friends. You got to know the right people because the one sitting right next to you could be your next future business partner. But more than that, it's not just about your peers in university. It is also really about your lecturers because your lecturer could also very well be a business partner as well. So I think, you know, there are many aspects of uh, university life that, um, and that students can really look at uh, because being a business person, I've always believed in networking. While it's not everything just like the A's, but it does help to get you somewhere. Um, so, yep, uh, Mother Wen, that would be uh, my, little, my little short start for today's uh, session. Mr. Mother Wen, I think you were muted. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, next, let's go on. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, let's move on to our next panelist, that is Mr. Marcus. All right, uh, a short background of Mr. Marcus. He is a first class degree holder, started career in L'Oreal, covering key account management and business development. And currently, he is this category strategy manager at Mars Food Malaysia. Marcus, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Madhavan. So, Morning guys, I'm Marcus. Uh, so just to give a brief intro, I mean, um, I think like what Madhavan has mentioned, I graduated from help in uh, 2012 uh, with first class honors in Bachelor of Business. And after graduating, um, prior to joining Laura, I had a short stint in a uh, Groupon. Uh, I then started my career in uh, Laura as a management trainee. And as part of the trainee stint, I was uh, fortunate enough to be selected to go to India for three months exposure. I then gradually climb up the ranks in, uh, I think, in commercial uh, in the commercial arm of L'Oreal, covering both uh, like what Madhavan has mentioned, key account management as well as a business development. So I think after six years in the beauty industry, I left L'Oreal as a key account manager in 2019, and I ventured into uh, the FMCG world as a key account, uh, uh, sorry, as a category strategy manager for Mars. So Mars, what is Mars actually? So you think about your Eclipse, uh, your Eclipse mints, your M and M's chocolates, your sneakers, to so even pet brands like. Whiskers, Pedigree, and Royal Canin. So that's where I apply my trade right now. Um, so that's a brief introduction of me. Um, so I think for me, I mean the business course in help with actually, which covers both the practical and theoretical aspect is something that I think I will not forget. I think to this very day, I still remember uh, subjects such as the one taught by Miss Tumati, which required us to really get our hands dirty. Uh, Marketing 201, I think I think Deborah, I think you will also remember this, that, uh, you know, consumer behavior, Uh, all right. Uh, I think we have missed. We have uh, lost Marcus, I guess. Marcus, are you still there? Okay. Uh, it's okay. I think Marcus has problem with his network at the moment. We'll get back once he join us back. Um, perhaps we shall move on with our. Did I disconnect? <laughs> okay, back. Okay, good. Uh, basically, due to all these uh, network issues, uh, there's always a problem. It's okay, Marcus. Back to you again. So where where did I stop? <laughs> You're talking about uh, M marketing two zero one and Miss Sumati hands getting dirty. Oh uh, yeah. So pretty much, I think um, 
during that time, we, I mean, during the marketing 201, I pretty much, we had to do, my team and I, we had to do car washing. And uh, it was not easy. I mean, uh, it was tiring and so on. And we realized it was actually not feasible in the long run. So we came up with a plan B, um, which was to uh, start baking cookies. So we had a look into something that was actually number one, low cost, and it was easy to replicate. And it also utilized the resources that each of every single team member have while also generating high enough profit margin. So that's why we, we opted to do uh, baking cookies and selling cookies instead. So this experience is honestly speaking, this is something that my teammates and I still talk about every now and then to this very day. And it's subjects like this that pretty much help build the foundation of the importance of number one teamwork, having a contingency plan, and I would say creative thinking as well. Our key traits, which I believe has also helped me in my career path so far. Um, other than the practical and theoretical aspect of, of what I've learned so far in help, I think the three years in help has also allowed me to somehow find my strengths that I'll eventually leverage on when carving my career path. So for the most of my part of my career, I've been in commercial, I would say sales. So back to the same project which I did, I mean, Marketing 201. So when my teammates and I were actually selling cookies, so we did set up, set up a booth, you know, in front of the campus. So that helped cater to students passing by the vicinity, you know, uh, that area. So my teammate and I, on the other hand, uh, Jeffrey and I. So on the other hand, we were tasked to actually walk around with the cookie tray, you know, walking around the streets and start selling cookies to strangers, pedestrians and even lecturers. So um, honestly speaking, um, there are many important traits, I think, that require someone to be a successful commercial person in their career and in a career in the long run. But I would like to believe I have somehow found my calling in sales when I realized that I had the confidence and the drive to close a deal while selling cookies. It helped. So honestly speaking, I think I can cover, I think I've just covered just one particular subject throughout my three years in help. I think there are many other subjects which I think I need almost a day to actually go through each and every single one of them. But I can without doubt actually vouch that the learning process I experienced in help has definitely excelled my career so far. And it has also somehow molded me to be who I am today. So um, with that, I pass the uh, virtual stage to Deborah. Deborah, over to you. Uh, all right, thank you, Marcus. Thank you. So far, we have seen uh, Eddie sharing his uh, experiences and uh, Marcus too. And what we can see is how uh, the life at uni at the faculty, at the same time, the subjects that they have taken up have actually guided guided them to what they are now. So, uh, without further delay, uh, let's let let's invite the third uh, panelist, Miss Deborah Devita. Now, a short uh, profile of Deborah. Deborah is an active student leader who is also the president of Business Student Council for two consecutive years. And she is also one of the co-founder and the vice president of Help Own Personal Empowerment Club. And uh, she was also the student ambassador at Help University. She started off her career with Hineken uh, and was last based in the global role in Singapore before she moved on to Unilever. And now she's currently the senior brand manager uh, in MAMI, Double Decker Malaysia Berhad under the Mr. Potato and Snacks category. Now, please welcome Deborah. Hi, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of the forum, and it's also very nice to see uh, my ex classmates here as well. Um, as, as mentioned by Mr. Madhuan, thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Deborah, and I am a health business alumni. So um, I will also just give you a little bit of context as uh, to where I am right now in my background. So my expertise lies in marketing and it's also something that I've decided from a younger age that I wanted to pursue. And hence, I, um, I actually uh, pursued a Bachelor of Business degree, uh, majoring in marketing with Help University. Uh, so from a career perspective, I actually started off my career with Heineken. Uh, handling brands like uh, a bit non-halal, la. <laughs> but brands like uh, Tiger, Guinness, Smirnoff Ice, uh, the global brands uh, and the likes. Um, and um, I also worked in a global role in Singapore, so I handled Tiger brand worldwide before I decided to move outside of the alcohol industry. Because uh, I believe as a marketer, it's key that we are able to adapt and also uh, utilize uh, the skill sets that we've learned in one specific product or service to another. So then Unilever was uh, my next route, uh, where I then handled the DAF portfolio. 
uh, and then uh, I, of course, uh, had the opportunity to move on into a bigger role. So here I managed a category. I moved on to Mummy Double Decker. It's a local conglomerate uh, and also very interesting in a sense where, you know, I've always done MNC and now, you know, with less weight tape and you really being the sole driver of a specific brand or category, it was quite an interest, interesting space to be in. Uh, so I handled this next category and um, you probably would be familiar with uh, brands like uh, Mummy Monster, Mr. Potato, uh, Double Decker and all that. So that's where uh, I actually handle at this point in time. So it's quite a nice portfolio uh, from a brand perspective. Uh, and I'd like to, sh I'd like to share, um, you know, how Help University has actually helped me uh, up, uh, to grow uh, in my career. Uh, so a little bit on that process. Uh, yeah. So I think Help uh, University itself has actually molded me into an individual that I'm happy uh, being, uh, be it professional or even personally. Um, I actually pursued uh, business, majored in marketing, and I've met really interesting lecturers uh, throughout my journey. Uh, so I think as my, uh, my ex-classmate has mentioned, Marcus, uh, you know, we've done quite a lot of hands-on things in, in the classroom. And it's interesting to see like some of the lecturers having very different approaches to learning. Um, yeah, so we have our textbooks and, you know, most of the time it's really based on that. You know, you're learning, you're absorbing and that's that. But in, in help. I was quite happy to, you know, be a part of a process that was very hands on. Uh, so, you know, there were a few projects that allowed us to actually sell products. So we identify what is it we wanted to sell. Uh, we identify how is it that we want to do our sales pitch, what kind of marketing efforts we want to put in. Uh, we were also a part of a 360 uh, integrator campaign. So we picked a brand and, you know, we identified all these different touch points. We actually had to present it to an audience. I think the whole uh, help university was able to sort of see that display. Uh, we even traveled, uh, you know, for research work, uh, myself to Mala to Penang actually. Um, so it was really uh, very experiential and very real in terms of, you know, the skills that we were utilizing. So uh, it's really sales pitches. It's really you thinking creatively and critically to get uh, the work done. Um, and it's also really bringing out some soft skills uh, at the end of the day that will allow you to connect with people that require you to complete your courses. Uh, so definitely interesting approach and uh, something that I truly uh, appreciate, uh, you know, from help. Uh, and um, of course, all this has allowed uh, an easier transition to the working force. So I wouldn't say, oh my, I go into the working force and I know everything. Uh, that's never the case. Uh, I, I, you, you would understand as you progress. Uh, but I do believe that uh, these hands-on experiences have actually allowed uh, a little bit more easier opening or transition to the workforce. Uh, you're dealing with people, uh, you're really thinking critically versus just uh, uh, following the books. Um, this has definitely helped. And I like that approach that help has carried uh, for this specific space. So that was, of course, uh, in classroom learning. Uh, but as also mentioned, I was quite active outside of the classroom as well. Um, and I was uh, given the opportunity to be the president of the Business Student Council for two years. Uh, and at the same time, I, I also had a, a friend of mine come up with an idea to co-found a club, which was called Help on Personal Development. So this club was actually a club where the objective was to introduce uh, students to the real life, you know, to help groom them so that they are ready for the working world. So in this uh, club, we've done activities like uh, public speaking uh, courses, self-grooming courses, even investment courses on gold, silver and property. So that was quite interesting and we wanted to allow um, students that wholesome learning. So in this space uh, as well, I think uh, learning was very rampant. You know, I was given the opportunity to manage quite a huge team in the student council. I think it was about 30 members uh, who were very passionate and had a very strong purpose to make campus life as fun and exciting as possible. So at that time, it was more of a revival. We wanted to create an atmosphere where people wanted to stay in campus, uh, learn together and collaborate. And I had a great team working with me. Uh, you know, I have very good memories to this date. So I think here skills like management, uh, networking, collaboration is something that is key, you know, especially when you handle such a huge team and also, you know, coming up with projects like the, you know, annual ball, uh, you have your, you know, um, orientations, you have uh, welcome, welcome parties. Uh, so 
uh, yeah, you definitely need to sort of harness these skills, you know, leadership being a part of it. And very happy to say that what I've learned here has allowed me that confidence to a certain extent to say that, hey, I can do this. I can work with this bunch of people. I am able to negotiate or collaborate in a way that I'm happy. That actually allowed me a, a very good foundation when I started out work. So 70% as you progress, you would understand 70% of the work is people skills. How do you deal with people? How are you working with a different uh, department, for instance? How do you negotiate? Um, and help actually allowed me that foundation to feel confident that I'm able to carry this out. So very happy from that, that point of view. And I think the best part was that help as a university uh, allowed that process to me and also uh, my, my, my ex-classmates. Uh, they were very um, co uh, cooperative and also very supportive. Uh, and they also gave us free reign to make those decisions, which is uh, surprising, but also uh, you know something that really helped us gain that confidence that we can do this. So I'm very grateful for you know all the support. I think there were a lot of lecturers involved who backed us up across, you know, who supported us to do even more, and um, yeah, who who always had our backs. So uh, so that that was great. I think in class learning, out of class learning, we have very supportive lecturers. We have also the platforms available for you to sort of create and explore. And uh, like I mentioned, I think le learning happens everywhere, uh, you know, and it doesn't stop in the classroom. So I think each one of us, you know, you being a fresh grad, you thinking of joining university or if you're already in university, I believe the Gen Z's are very opinionated. They are very smart individuals. Uh, you know, you come with a lot of ideas. So this is a space or a safe space where you are able to explore. Uh, you know, you're able to experiment your trial and errors. So if you have an idea that works, you know, speak to speak to the you know faculty, speak to the department, and I'm I'm very positive that uh, you know they're they're going to come back and support you and allow you that platform of learning. Uh, so so don't stop in the classroom. I think classroom learning is great, and we have really good line of lecturers who are able to do very different sets of teaching. Uh, you know, but also allow yourself, uh, uh, you know, away from that as well, because, you know, like I think Eddie mentioned rightfully, networking brings you a, a, a long way, you know, a collaboration brings you a long way, uh, you know, and some people from other functions in your department may be your friends at this point, and you may also even look for them as experts in a certain field. So it's, it's a lot that goes on in university, and I think it's a very exciting space to be in. So help as a university is a great place. Uh, I've had a great time there learning, making friends, having great memories. And I, I'd like to wish uh, the team exactly the same thing, you know, to the newcomers, to, to those who are currently studying. It's never too late to initiate anything. Uh, you know, go for it. Uh, learn as much as you can and, you know, make the best of university life because I think uh, some of your mes best memories are made there. Uh, so all the best to you. Uh, I hand it over to uh, Mr. Madhavan. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Very insightful sharing. Uh, you can notice that what Deborah has shared has a lot of involvement on uh, your personal country uh, involvement in a lot of ac uh, activities beyond academic. Now, uh, we have two sets of questions. Uh, I will hold the question till the final uh, panelist has presented. Now, the next one, let me move on to Shamiz. Now, Shamiz is actually a trade marketing manager at Ethica Beverages in Dhyan Brahat. And uh, one of the key points that you will notice that Shamiz will be sharing was his sports, uh, sports scholarship. And he was also the Sportsman of the Year nominee in 2011. So let's uh, call upon uh, Shamiz to share his experiences. Welcome, Shamiz. Hi, uh, thanks, Mr. Madhavan. Um, thank you for a short introduction. Um, okay, anyway, I'll just quickly go through um, a brief background of my current career. Um, once I was done with the help, um, I joined Nestle uh, as, an, as a marketing executive and I was there for about nearly three to four years. And I moved on to a sports marketing agency. Uh, it's more of a different side of the business world where you see it in uh, the marketing initiatives being very different in, in the sense where you, there's a lot of planning involved. And after three years in, in that role, I moved back into FMCG, which is my current role right now in Ethica uh, Beverages. Um, anyway, before I start, it's actually very nice to see some of the uh, lecturers that I have really fond memories of and, and have actually helped me um, 
in my development to where I am today. And also uh, Debra and Marcus, uh, we were in the same uh, college, uh, same time. Uh, Debra being my president, it's an honor to be here as well to speak with her. Uh, currently, I mean, we are all in the same industry, but Debra and Marcus are technically competitors. I'm actually their complementary product. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in Ethica Beverages. Uh, we had a, a bottler for PepsiCo. Um, I'm, I'm the trade marketing manager there. So, okay, I think I'll just start off with my experience in health. Um, I think the biggest uh, part and the biggest uh, area which I've learned the most is the whole business course, actually. Um, subjects covering uh, marketing, it touches on manufacturing, supply chain, logistics, accounting, finance, economics, even a hint of legal aspects, which are actually very important when you first move into the corporate world. Um, it helped me realize that how all these functions, or I can say business function interlinks, and there are always theories in place. I mean, if you want me to recall every single theory, I won't be able to remember it. But the key theories that you pick up in college are what you end up, you will end up having as a foundation when you first walk into the corporate world. Um, and more importantly, I, I don't have to repeat this. I think Marcus has, has repeated it. Uh, Deborah has repeated it. A lot of practical exposures given in um, in health, which actually which actually creates a very strong foundation when you first walk into the corporate world. And you don't end up walking in just doing what you are told, you end up creating value to the, com to the company as you first enter and um, more, more instead of being a doer and now you're more of a thinker, you, you provide more value. So that's actually very important of what uh, companies are looking for nowadays. Um, I just want to share one experience. I think the biggest, the biggest part for me in college was actually the final project, which I, which I did. Uh, it really opened my eyes to many, many things. I think it's MGT 400 and I had uh, Miss, Sum Miss Sumati is here today. It's nice, nice to see her. Uh, guide, she guided me throughout the whole project and we, we really had to go to the ground to understand consumer sentiments, um, retail um, uh, problems, and we kind of had to connect the dots to come up with a final um, finding to share, which to me, that was the, the icing on the cake of my whole uh, college uh, uh, period. And I knew I was ready after that. So, I mean, besides, okay, um, from the age of seven to 17, you've been studying in a classroom. I think college is not something where you want to expect to just go and study once again. It's actually more than that. Eddie early on has mentioned about socializing, which is very true. Um, I mean, it's just personal to me. I've actually met my wife today in college. I'm married to her, it's just a big thing. I met many friends who are in the industry uh, today and we actually work together on uh, certain pro uh, campaigns in the trade. So socializing is actually very important and um, coming into college being, I would say partially introvert. I didn't like to present in front of class and uh, all that. And with uh, the, when I took on the business course, I had no choice but to present every single subject and got me used to that. It built my confidence and got me ready for the, for the uh, corporate world. And uh, just to add on on Mr. Madawan's, um point on sports. So I'm, I'm a sports enthusiast. I, I was on a scholarship in help uh, for futsal and bowling. I was formerly a state player. Uh, it doesn't look like it now. I've a lot of weight. I've stopped playing sports. So in what when I moved to help, what I realized is the level of sports in help is exceptionally high. So um, I also play badminton for state level. And when I first went to the training, my first opponent was Wong Chun Han. If you guys, I, I don't know whether this generation would recognize, Wong Chun Han was a national world champion and he was studying in help as well. And of course, I didn't make the badminton team. <laughs> the level was so, so high. So, I, And the whole futsal team was a national level and the bowling team was a national level. So it was tough competition, but that was where I learned the most. I knew, I learned so much in terms of leadership skills, I learned so much from the training with them and the exposures with them. We, I mean, that to me was the, a very big part of molding who I am today as well. Without the platform, which is help today, I would not have met these fantastic people throughout my uh, college life. Um, I mean, I won't, I think that's, that's the biggest sharing I can give. Um, uh, over to you, Mr. Madhuban. Thanks. All right. Thank All right. you, Shamish. Thank you, Shamish. Thank you. Uh, uh, one of the main key things that uh, Shamir touched was uh, the networking part that uh, actually uh, broadened his experience. Now, uh, finally, we have uh, Ms. Liu Pauling, the finalist. 
uh, the, I, I call her the finalist because she's known as a finalist. Now, a short background of her, she has participated very actively in very, many major competition organized in Malaysia while she was a student at Health University. Now, she, together with her teammates, she has emerged as the first runners up in SEMA Global Business Challenge at national level in 2011. And they emerged as a first runners up. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, she also won the global finalist. She was one of the global finalists in the Maybank Go Ahead Challenge in 2012, whereby she was offered to be part of Maybank Global Apprentice Program back in 2012. Then she was relocated to Maybank Shanghai when she was still in her two year apprentice, apprentice program. Uh, once her contract as an apprentice ended, she was promoted to relationship manager in client coverage and corporate banking in Maybank Shanghai. In 2016, she joined DBS Bank Shanghai as a relationship manager. And now she has been promoted to assistant vice president in real estates with DBS Shanghai. Please welcome Pauling. All right, thank you, Mr. Madawan. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Pauling. Um, we have here all the good story, great story, great success of our friends um, just now, all the panelists. Um, basically, uh, what I would like to share is I have the same experience as them. Um, more on what I would like to share today would be uh, how I get to Shanghai. <laughs> OK, um, I, um, I was major in accountancy, but I believe that uh, major in accountancy in help doesn't only stop you in studying like accounting, accounting, accounting but it also gives you the opportunity to learn about marketing, information technology, um, economics, business law, all, the, all these economics, um, all these um, other subjects which should help you not only in thinking about uh, accounting when you do accounting, but it also helps you in uh, preparing you to the business world when you meet with clients. So I uh, join a lot of competitions during my university life, which I enjoy a lot. Um, teaming up with my friends, my university mates, and um, we get into the challenge and we get a lot of help from our, our lecturers that guide us on how to present, that guide us on how to uh, walk into the corporate world, meeting the leaders, because when you're presenting, you are not talking to a student, but you're talking to the corporate leaders from all the um, CEO, CFO, and the panelists are all invited from different, different corporates, uh, from different uh, industries. So uh, I enjoy, um, and I enjoy all the competitions uh, during my university life and uh, all the helps and uh, guidance given by the lecturers. Um, also that I would think that um, joining those competitions doesn't only stop you from uh, bringing what you have studied into uh, transform, trans translating them in to your business case presentations, but it also help you to build confidence, uh, meeting with people, uh, give you the courage and think, uh, uh, provide you um, some a platform to, uh, to do effective communications. I'm not so um, kind of active person, but I make friends with marketing people like Debra, Marcus, when you make friends with them, um, in certain way, your social networking will actually enlarge your enlarge your um, uh, social social uh, networking session. Mm. So um, after graduate from um, help, I uh, I managed to get my positions of global maybank apprentice program to the competition. So I get all along my uh, life from university to career was about competition and competition. So I entered, um, I joined Maven Global Apprentice Program. It's a two years management training program um, that gives you the opportunity to learn from different aspects of uh, the bank, um, the, the industry. You can start from branch managing, you can go to um, strategy, finance, marketing in the whole bank. So <clears throat> this two years program also gave me the opportunity to come to Shanghai where uh, I serve the large corporate clients in um, Shanghai, um, those that investing in China. So meeting corporate leaders is my day to day uh, um, work um, routine. So I have to speak with um, corporate leaders like um, CFO, CEOs, business, um, business um, managers, uh, strategy, their treasury. 
So uh, from um, what I, we have learned from help in different aspects, for example, marketing, economics, the uh, business law, this will help you to actually bring uh, what you have studied and also in during the lecture session, the lecture doesn't only give you like what um, just teach you what was from the book, but they also share life cases, for example, what happened in the business world, what happened to the inflation in different countries, what happens when uh, you have a, a distress session in a, a corporate, um, as well as uh, many, many other life cases. I found it very interesting when the uh, studying in, uh, helped when the lecturer actually shares a lot of uh, life cases, their experience and what they have uh, got to know because um, listening to business news, uh, all these financial um, updates, uh, financial markets updates, will actually helps you in certain ways to prepare you to the corporate world. So uh, we don't need to uh, do that by ourselves, but the lecturers will somehow, when they will actually tell you and share with you what they have learned, what, ha what they have experienced in the corporate world and the business world. Um, after these, um, after some two years of management uh, training programs, uh, which was uh, completed in 2014, I was actually uh, offered the positions, a permanent positions in Maybank Shanghai to continue to serve our corporate clients here. And um, I felt that um, in China, it's very different from what happens in Malaysia because Malaysia, the um, market is not as big as China. You know, China is the biggest population in the world. You've built a lot of competitions, a lot of uh, different business. Um, they, have, they are so innovative. Uh, regulation change runs very often once in a week and a, a month as compared to other uh, countries. So here, I would think that um, every little thing that you learn uh, from your lectures, from conversation with your friends, your um, lecturers, uh, corporate leaders, any anyone that you have met will actually bring you uh, a little bit of uh, what you will be uh, facing in the future. So here I am in Shanghai. Um, I face a lot of uh, I face a lot of uh, challenge every day because the regulation change. We have now COVID nineteen, and I am now covering real estate, where all the hospitality, shopping mall closed down. Uh, two months, three months, and uh, hotel was uh, hotel, cinemas, KTV are on, not allowed to open um, for operations. So uh, all these challenges faced um, in today's world were actually um, something that we have not thought of will happen, um, but it did happen. So um, in in all those experience that we gained from um, studying, some conversation with lecturers, social networking, but actually helps you to bring you to think differently, strategy thinking like for example in China. So um, the retail closed out, um, the uh, FMB was uh, got uh, affected, hospitalities are for hotel, service department, travel, tourism was affected badly. So what they did is that they did a lot of online selling. So it happens in China. I believe it also happened in Malaysia. You see a lot of people selling on Facebook. But in China, it was very different. So you have a lot of like Alibaba, Taobao, you have a, a Tintong, you have a lot of this online platform that helps you. And even you have, um, I believe in Malaysia, you have put Panda. So all these are actually immersed from the changing and challenging, the changing world of how we live today. So um, I would think that, uh, think our books. Uh, would actually help you a lot and um, be confident. Uh, talk to corporate leader, talk to your lecturers. And um, if you are interested to join competitions, yeah, do join and you will learn a lot. You will get a lot of, uh, you will gain a lot from that and it helps you to, um, to enter into the corporate world will change very once very often. Thank you. Return back to Mr. Madurin. Thank you, Pauling. Thank you. Thank you. It was very happy and uh, proud to hear that uh, although we don't cover the emergency response during COVID, during our academic, we are, we are, we are actually proud on how our students were actually to, able to meddle with such a situation which is beyond the context of syllabus. Thank you, Pauling. Thank you. Now, uh, we have all our five panelists have shared uh, their experiences and how 
our faculty have actually molded them. I have a few questions from the panel, but before that, let me just uh, check. Uh, one of the panel, uh, one of the attendees, uh, U07349, have raised your hand. Do you wish to type your question? I do not know what is the name, but uh, it is written as ID 07, U07349. Okay, never mind. In that case, let me just uh, post you a question that is asked by Dr. Gopal. Uh, the question is, dear speakers, congratulations on your success. Do you think that it is important for students to speak up during lectures and tutorials? How would it help them directly and indirectly? Uh, anyone would like to take up this question? Um, sure. Yeah, Deborah. Thank okay. you. Uh, yeah, I think, I think. Uh, Interaction is probably the best way to learn. Um, and I mean, you, you have the choice, right? You can keep quiet. And, you know, sometimes that clarification is not as clear it, it, for your thought process. But always asking and always reaffirming, you know, the fact of what you've understood or if there is clarity needed will always probably give you that, uh, how to say, uh, a, a better absorption. So you, you have the choice. You have the choice of, yeah, keeping quiet going back and figuring it out yourself or you, you just let it go or you have another choice where you can clarify at that moment or you can even reaffirm what you've understood. So I think the latter is definitely a better choice. Uh, and then of course, if, you know, the lecturers, they're not there to bite you. Uh, and to be honest, I think the help lecturers are really quite open. You know, they're friendly, you know, they, they're very approachable. So uh, I, I, I think it's, it's best for your best interest to always ask if there is clarity needed. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. Anybody would like to add up to what Deborah has shared? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Shamiz, yeah. Uh, I would like to add to that. I think uh, it is uh, important if you honestly don't understand or if you are not clear on it, if you want to speak up to everything, then you're just going to disrupt the whole class. Uh, what Deborah said is right. If you are not sure and you think you can figure it out on your own, nowadays we're in the era of technology and you can just Whip up your phone, Google it, and figure it out. But I think what's more important is actually uh, nowadays uh, to help in the process of critical thinking, it's to challenge certain um, points that are put in class uh, to have a good, uh, healthy debate, which is very science driven. It's that, that, that I think is more important. So you speak up and you, like, you challenge certain theories to just kind of help you understand it better, because then you get different perspectives of things. Yeah. Thank you, Shamiz. Uh, yeah. I would like uh, to add okay. uh, something, I, yes. Colin, here. Yes, for yeah, I would think um, definitely uh, speaking to lecturers or corporate, uh, I mean, um, asking out, um, I believe that during the lecturer sessions in HELP, the lecturer is not, um, is not only like, uh, I believe you always have a two-way communications. Like, um, I still remember in a lot of classes, like um, Dr. Kiran, Dr. Shamba classes, even Mr. Madhuan's classes, or Ms. Liu classes, marketing. Um, it's not about one-way communication. It's always when um, the lecturer will ask you questions. It's not like what they will teach directly from the syllabus, from the book, but they will ask you, what would, what will you think? What do you think next one will happen? Or what do you think um, next? Or um, what, what, what should we do? So I believe um, the lecture session always have a two-way communication. It actually helps and it makes it more interesting. So not only that uh, it, um, the student have to just listen to the lectures, but it always has a, a, a platform and a, a sessions where you can have a, a direct conversations with the lecturers. And it also helps your peers because sometimes they are not, um, they are just afraid to speak out. But when you ask questions, it actually helps the listener as well, uh, helps the whole class. To actually better understand this of uh, what tech lecturers have uh, shared. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pauling. Okay, uh, I will move on to the next question that is asked by Dr. Chia. Please share with us on how your company operates during the COVID-19 pandemic. Was it an was it an easy transition or a drastic dislocation of how the company moved? Anybody would like to take up? 
Eddie? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Madhavan. I think uh, it's it has been a pretty interesting three months, I would say, uh, because traditionally we are pretty much involved in um, organizing seminars in a large scale for um, PT3 SPM students. So usually our seminars are around, what, at least 500 to 1,000 students. And we were right smack in the middle of our marketing campaign when COVID came in. Uh, and I can just be very transparent. Uh, this is the first year. I mean, we've been through several cycles of um, of, of recessions, you know, or maybe not, I, I won't really exactly call it a recession, but there will be you no know, boom and bust cycles in the economy. We've been through several um, throughout the past, of course, 30 years, but um, education has never really been um, affected as much as uh, how it has been today. Um, for the first time ever in my 15 years of doing, you know, being involved in education, um, sales has dropped 80% this year, 80% uh, on, on our side, even just seminars. And we're not doing large ticket um, items. We're doing seminars that are worth about 200 ringgit and students would usually pay. So it, we did take quite a big hit. But I think in the world of business, it's all about speed. It's all about, you know, how quick you respond to um to, 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 to issues like this, to um, so the crisis like this. So what we've done is we've pretty much just started an online platform. Well, um, it's called mytuition.life. Uh, so we have pretty much just uh, launched it um, early this month. So this is June. Um, so it's been a good almost four weeks. Um, the traction is pretty good. I think uh, so far in the past four weeks, we've managed to garner about 6,000 students who sign up on our platform to study. So we didn't really expect it, but uh, you know, it, it's all about adapting. It's all about um, adapting to this change. And I do believe that you know, uh, things won't go back to normal that soon. I think the economy is still going to take some time to recover. Uh, in fact, you know, being involved in the ASEAN Retailers and Franchise Federation, I can tell you that a majority, almost every single one, you know, we've got over, we've got hundreds of members. Every single one is affected across the industry, uh, and I think you know, even help university would be affected as well. Uh, I think it's, it's time to just really pretty much um, change our business model because I think it's going to be here to stay even after COVID. Um, even after we lift the MCO, even after we found a vaccine for the COVID-19, I think in general, the population will already adapt to this new style of living because I think it's so convenient right now. You know, we're just on Microsoft team. I'm loving the fact that in, for the past three months, I don't have to go out from my home and I'm still getting people paying for my seminars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eddie. Uh, I, I will move on to the next question. Now, being there as a student before, now, l let me just ask your opinion. What do you think are the reasons why students don't open up during classes? That's actually a very good question. I wanted to address that because it's by Mr. Kanepen, right? I believe. Mr. Ravi, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna share. Yeah, I'm gonna share something, you know, which I thought was um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, that that it's pretty much interrelated with my life at Help University. So, uh, being an athlete, you know, I've been, I've been, um, I've been representing a country since I was 16 years old, right? So, uh, when I was way younger, when I was in school, when I when I first went to university, I don't really talk a lot. So I don't really, I don't really speak a lot. In fact, I think you know, I uh, when I have this group meeting with everyone over here. Everybody seems to know Deborah, you know, and Marcus and Shamiz <laughs> and Baling. You know, I'm like the uh, odd one out because I don't really spend a lot of time talking, right? So uh, my first job, uh, I landed my first part-time job during my first semester at Help University. Uh, and that was actually uh, at Fitness First, which is located just a stone's throw away from, from with my help, right? So that was my first job ever. Uh, and and when, I, when I stepped into Fitness First the first time, uh, the first person I saw riding a bicycle was actually, you know, he's actually quite big in size, you know, overweight. And uh, I, I didn't know that who that person was uh, until I went into the uh, staff's room and they told me that that guy is actually Dan Sri Rashid Hussein, the owner of, uh, the founder of uh, RHB Bank. So that was the moment I, I, I started to notice, okay, this is a different ball game right now, right? So, um, I started working part time, and my salary and my wage at that time was actually six ringgit per hour. And uh, after I think about six months, I got to know a few of the VIPs over there. And when they found out about my background, they engaged me to basically personally 
uh, teach them privately at their homes, which is also located in Damansara Heights. So while I was working part-time with you know, earning six ringgit per hour, there were people from the gym who was engaging me to teach them at 250 ringgit per hour <laughs> at their homes. So I think that's the important part about networking. That's the important part about opening up. If you're afraid to open up, just think about the opportunities and the, and the possibilities that you can open up by just simply talking and knowing the right people. That, that's wow, the, the first thing that... Cost. Yeah, yeah. So like what Deborah said, you, you have a choice. You can keep quiet, which I could have. I could have kept quiet. Uh, I could have uh, earned that six ringgit hourly. But yeah, just by opening, just by getting to know people. Um, yep. My first, uh, my first VIP client was actually uh, Dr. Sri Bernard Chandran, uh, and 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 from there it basically just, you know, but once you, you once you've got yourself in that circle, it's very easy for you to know the others in that circle. So basically, it was his family, and then his neighbors, his neighbors' friends, and then it's where I, you know, I started to get my private clients. That's my first, um, that's my first part of goal, I would say, from Help University. <laughs> because it's so near to 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 this gym. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Eddie. All right, uh, we are running out of time. Let me just quickly uh, summarize the question that is asked by Dr. Kishan, Dr. Te, and uh, Miss Sumati. Now, after experiencing work life, what area? Which area do you think that can we can actually improve further on our teaching and learning for the lecturers that can benefit the students? Anyone? Um, yeah, I'll just do a quick one. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, what was done in the past, for instance, the hands-on learning, I think keep doing that. And if there's possibilities of extending it across more more classwork or courses, I think that would be very much appreciated. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's, uh, yeah, it's like an eye-opener in a sense. Uh, but also, aside from that, I think soft skills is definitely, uh, you know, something that uh, is key. Uh, it's key across so any platforms that allow students to you know showcase that or constantly put them at the forefront uh, uh, is something that i would recommend and then last but not least of course a uh, digital world so ensuring that you know i think now the rel the, re the the current syllabus is relevant to uh, uh, digitization and you know how we can take it forward um, so just very quickly top line uh, this would be my suggestions lah, but i'm sure the panel the rest would also like to add on yeah, actually, I, I just want to share. I think we are in an era of uh, big data. I think that's one area which um, should be a syllabus on its own to focus purely on um, managing data as a whole, from analyzing it to reading it to making sense out of it and coming out with um, solutions from it. Uh, data is technically in our everyday life in the corporate world. Um, you cannot just go and share a, a program or think of an idea and just say you want to run it without data to back, back it up. It has to be linked to something. So I think that's a very, very big area in which almost every corporate uh, companies are looking for nowadays, people who are very savvy with data and able to maneuver themselves around big data. I think just to add on to data, right? I think one of the few things that I think it's important in, in, in our career right now, it's uh, um, handling Microsoft Excel. I think that's something that I think uh, everyone will agree. I mean, for me, for instance, you know, be it whether in Groupon, whether it's, I'm in Laurel or even right now in Mars, uh, Excel, playing around with it, you know, handling your data, play, uh, manipulating with the formulas and so on, is something that I perhaps maybe if we could actually have a kick start, a hit start perhaps in, in, in help that could actually serve as a very strong advantage, you know, when you're going out in, in, in the field. I think a lot of employees right now, they, they actually, they actually emphasize on, on, on that. I mean, having an edge in handling Excel, even PowerPoint uh, presentation, you know, it, it serves as a very strong edge to, um, to um, employees right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. OK, we shall uh, take the last question. Uh, did you in any way, any way feel disadvantaged by holding a local degree during an interview? Why? Anyone? Not really, actually. I don't, I'm not, I don't know about you guys, uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's, it's I mean, put it bland, blandly, it's it's just a degree at the end of the day. I mean, you have, uh, going out there when you're having the interview with your, your employees and so on, at the end, I think 
what uh, what uh, Eddie and Deborah has mentioned, soft skill is what that matters. You know, you got to impress them. I mean, yeah, you can come from UK, you can come from Australia, but you can't really impress themselves, uh, impress yourself. I mean, uh, when you're going to an interview, that makes no sense. I mean, I, I, honestly speaking, I don't think that serves as a disadvantage uh, for me. I mean, coming from help, I think it serves as an advantage, honestly speaking. On the other hand, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, sorry, I just want to add, uh, this, this was actually an advice that was given for my first superior. Um, you need to understand the, the steps of getting a, an interview and the job. When you're sending a your resume, you're not sending a resume to get the job. You're sending the resume to get the interview. So how you sell yourself, or you, if I want to put it in a more uh, for, uh, politically right sense, how do you market yourself in your resume is to focus to get the interview, not the job. Once you get the interview, then that's where you sell yourself to the person to get a job. So yeah, so there's something people need to understand that the resume is not for the job. Resume is for the interview. At the end of the day, the employ the employers are only gonna hire you if you impress them, and you know if, if that's what they want when they see you in the interview. Yeah, so. maybe I can add on something also because in Maybank, I did uh, um have a half half year sessions in um the HR where I'm recruiting the uh, graduates from uh, all over the um, uh, 20 countries that uh, Maybank has. So we have this uh, Maybank Go Ahead Challenge, where we even shortlist those candidates, um, not from where they have studied, but in terms of how they carry themselves, how they think, how they present themselves uh, during the interview sessions. So um, to me, the resume is just, I will just go through once and I will see what are the experience and how you present yourself. Um, whether you are very um, active in uh, activities and your soft skills and um, when you come to us face to face, um, how do you sell, how, how do you actually even um, introduce yourself? Like I believe that um, the background of university is just uh, bring you where you are, but not to um, whether it's a, a, a ticket for you to uh, join any uh, corporate uh, large MNC. Thank you. Thank you, Pauling. It was very insightful. Uh, in fact, we are definitely very, very proud that you have given us an opportunity to shape your future and also uh, being part of the journey of your education life. All right, uh, just to summarize uh, the, uh, a few things. Uh, what we can observe from what they have shared, it shows that they are able to maneuver with multi-discipline, like uh, some of them majored in certain courses, but they have different specialization, different industries. And we are definitely very happy that we prepared you to the for the corporate world. And also, uh, you have touched that networking is one of the uh, opportunity opportunity that we have actually given you and uh, hands on learning that you have learned during uh, the classes because we don't only uh, concentrate on examination, but we allow you to actually customize that knowledge that needs to improve the needs of the corporate world. All right. Uh, we would like to thank all of you. Uh, and we would like to congratulate and we wish you all the best uh, for future undertakings. And as a note from Mr. Stephen, we do have electives in business analytics and data analytics, and we will be launching our uh, bachelor in business analytics degree program in August 2020. All right. So uh, you can you guys can join us too. You can be our speakers and also share your experiences, right? Anything, uh, uh, any last word would you like to share? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, to everyone who's watching, you know, thank you for your time. We appreciate you hearing us out. Um, and I wish you all the best. Uh, like I mentioned, some of your best memories are from university. So aside from learning, which is key, also have fun, um, you know, be open and yeah, all the best to you. Thank you, Deborah. And uh, last word, been a student before, been a student before, let me tell you something, in your life, no matter how old you are, the most important life, moment that you'll treasure is your university life. Like what they have, I had to. Thank you very much, uh, panelists, audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you.